Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how to make a tandem rotor helicopter. Now as you can see here from my example, this is obviously my take on the Chinook helicopter. You could see it has the two rotors, one in the front, one in the back, and what is neat is that there is a little bit of a gap, kind of an, like where they do cover the same area. But what's really neat about these helicopters is there is no tail rotor, so it lets you have a cargo bay or whatever, carry containers, a lot of useful things. How do you make one? Well, I'm going to show you in this video. This is what we're going to be making, and while it's not going to win any beauty contests, you can see that it does have the dual rotors, and that it is quite stable and quite functional, and of course you can adapt it to any configuration that you want including any type of engine jet engines and whatnot now if you know how to make basic helicopters then this video is for you if you don't know how to make a basic helicopter such as the one i'm showing you here i recommend you watch my helicopter tutorial where i go through the steps and show you how to make a regular helicopter meaning one that has a tail rotor so that is the prerequisite we're going to go through some concepts and things in this video that are already covered there, such as the gyroscope and certain things. We're going to breeze right through them. So if you're still here, that means you know how to get to this point. What we're going to do is remove that rear tail rotor because now that's no longer going to be used by anything. And we're going to add a second rotor assembly here. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make an engine, I'd already assume you know how to do all that, so we're just going to breeze through to the configuration. Here is our jelly bean like helicopter. I just expanded the frame, nothing more to it than that. I did put a back motor here of the exact same configuration. The reason I did that is because I fear that two propeller blades are not powerful enough. Now, I could have just made this whole thing out of with electric motors but i do want to show you a little bit more a, a better a bit better of an approach anyways there we have it so now i've placed the rotors in a position where they are over top one another so that is the first step now right now we have everything in the same direction so obviously it will not work but what i just want to do make sure that it spins so everything's starting to spin but if you do this your helicopter is going to spin too. So if you just put the rotors in the exact same position, front and back, you're not going to have a good time. I did come across this amazing simple tutorial by user Polar Bark, and I'm not taking credit for any of these discoveries, but we're going to use this guide in making our tandem rotor helicopter. Now, of course, you could read it, you could do it yourself, I'm sure. Most of you can figure it out, but some of you are visual people like me that want to see an example and understand what each of these things means. So we're going to go through each one of these and start to connect the dots on our helicopter in Stormworks. So first things first, it says the front rotor is going to remain normal. So as we have it currently, the rear rotor is going to be mirrored. So let us take it and we're going to move cut and we're going to press U. So now it became mirrored. It's still facing the forward direction, but you can see the little arrows are now opposite. We're going to paste this and join the bodies up with the rest of it. Then it says connect the pitch normally. So currently we have a couple of these things. We're going to grab the pitch and put the pitch where the pitch should go. Now it's asking us to add blocks. And instead of ad blocks, I'm going to just go ahead and make a microcontroller that you could use when I upload this creation. So on the bottom, I've actually placed all the other microcontrollers from the simple helicopter build. And now I'm going to place the tandem rotor helicopter. So we're going to go into this, call it tandem helicopter. Okay. And in here now, we have to do some addition and we're going to have to do some other stuff. So what we're going to need is to input the yaw that comes in and we're going to have another one to input the roll. So those two things come in and then what we're going to need to go out is the roll and that's going to be set to an output. 
so that's the add blocks. Then we also need another thing. This is the roll for the front. We're gonna need another one for the roll to the rear. We're gonna just add rotor so it's quite clear and we're gonna make this an output. So now you can see that we have all of these simple, <laughs> we're gonna have just simple addition, but yaw, roll, come in, front, rotor, roll, and rear, rotor, roll. Jumping into this, organizing these things up, and we're just gonna be using addition. So like Polar Bark's tutorial says, we have a, a front add block. So we're taking the yaw, and we're taking the roll, and that goes to the front rotor roll. Just a simple addition. Now for the rear, we're gonna actually be inverting it. So in this case, we are gonna take the yaw as a positive, and now roll is gonna just be put with a function. So we're gonna inverse it, negative x, just like this. Going into this add block, going to the rear roll rotor. We're going to spawn this up inside the game and connect all the dots. So if we're up here, we'll see that previously we had the roll attached to the rotor itself coming out of the stabilized roll. In this case now, we actually need to have the front roll rotor go here and the rear roll rotor go there. And of course, the yaw and the roll are going to come from the stabilized. So just like we had everything coming out of the stabilized here, we're going to grab that pitch once I can find it or yaw, sorry, and drag the yaw out to there. We're going to grab the roll, drag the roll to there. And last but not least, we have to connect the collective. And you could see in the guide says propellers must be set to neutral up down to collective. So that's as before, nothing changed. We're just going to grab that up down and put it into the collective there. One last thing the guide says to put the gearboxes facing the uh, motor with three to one. We'll see how that works just because we have a couple of microcontrollers that may clash with it that may have to be redone now we're gonna see if our jelly bean flies so as you can see we're taking off now we're getting some weird sort of shaking in the uh and of course now the whole thing falls and fails but we were able to take off so that's a start when i see something like that my mind instantly goes to thinking that there is too much rps going into these uh into this assembly into the rotors so i'm just going to go ahead and put a new torque meter and just another dial here and we'll see what happens now some crazy number here may be the cause of this issue you can see it's going up to close to 40 so that change is causing or that kind of high number is causing that issue potentially it's also possible that the helicopter is just too light and you have to add some weight blocks because in the current configuration, the game doesn't really do well with extremely light objects. And you could see in this case, we're under 2000 weight. So that could also be some of this explanation here. Otherwise, all the functionality is working. We're able to yaw, we're able to pitch, we're able to roll and obviously go up and down. So now there's just something with the configuration of these engines. but. It is different for every helicopter and you may not have an issue at this point. You can see that we're at 30 uh, RPS for the propellers, but that's still too much or that's causing some issues or instabilities. So I'll see what I can find out here. First, I tried adding extra weight and you could see that we still get that jittery thing going. So let's go back to the drawing board. It may honestly be because you could see that it's doing that in the uh, rolling direction. So let's just turn the roll down to like 60%. And I could even remove some of this weight because the weight itself didn't fix anything here. And there you have it. Now we can roll quite easily. We can change the 
collective, we can give us some forward motion. Of course, when you get these jittery things going, you have to adjust the settings. But you could see now we're flying in our little jelly bean quite easily and nicely and stably. And the best thing is that all the microcontrollers that I previously developed still work here. So if you watched the other video and you developed all the stuff that you see here in the front of the helicopter, I'm talking about the altitude and position hold, you'll see that they'll still work and still function with this helicopter. So that's a really neat thing to have. You don't even have to think about it and you just get it going. Even the yaw, um, anti-yaw, if you remember when we made that in the other video to prevent the helicopter from kind of spinning around in circles, it works. You just plug the yaw in, what you'd previously plug in, you just plug it into the new microcontroller that you and I made on the underside here for the tandem rotor helicopter. Anyway, there you have it, a very simple way to make a tandem rotor helicopter. Yes, this one looks silly, but you can implement this in any which way you want, including much bigger and better designs. I do want to thank all of my Discord server boosters, I do want to thank my YouTube members, and I want to thank each and every one of you for the support and for watching these videos and giving me the inspiration and motivation to make such things. So, thank you each and every one of you, and I'll see you next time in the future videos and in new creations that I have underway.